And when you think about the strategic thinking process, so I'm switching gears on you now, which is how do you create a vision for the organization? How, how, do, you, how do you make the whole organization in the tactical things that they do every day? Because all of us, when we have a job, 90% of our time is spent on that job every day, right? We get, we get consumed by that job every day. And so only 10% of the time do we think about where am I going to be five years from now, either as a business or as a project or, or, or whatever. So um, the concept of a strategic driver uh, brings you organizational ethos. It, it sort of takes you in terms of how, you, how that organization will behave. A good example, for instance, is 3M. 3M is all about adhesives. So you won't find 3M um, in the tire industry. They basically do everything associated with adhesives, and that's sort of their, that's their ethos. Um, you know, you've had other companies like Tyco, their ethos was financial engineering, right? I mean, everything was about the bottom line. It was all about profit and cash. So they managed their whole business that way. So there's all different kinds of ethos. You have to kind of decide for your organization what ethos you would have to have. My organization had a market-driven ethos. We needed to understand what our customers wanted and what they were going to buy. And so we didn't, we weren't selling products, we were selling solutions to our customers. And then once you select the driver, you have to create a vision. Um, and once you, and that vision reflects the future needs of the enterprise. And then you need three or five strategic objectives. You notice I sort of said three or five, not 10 or 15. Three or five strategic objectives that underpin that vision. And then you need an action plan for those four or five strategic objectives to make sure that you make progress. Because if you have a vision and a set of strategic objectives and you have no action plan, it's just a dream. It's a poster for somebody, not a real, um, not a real strategic thinking process. So I, I gave you, I'm, I'm giving you an example. This is one of my clients, University of Hawaii College of Engineering. They're product and service show. They produce students and they serve the community in terms of providing education. This is the College of Engineering. And their vision um, is really only threefold. And it turns out, if you can't put a vision down sort of in three sentences, then you really haven't given it much thought. So, you know, they're focused on students and parents and Hawaii, the mainland, and Asia. So they're trying to attract students from the mainland and trying to attract students from Asia. And then trying to be relevant in the state that they live in. Of the state of Hawaii. So, and they want to be nationally recognized in several areas from an engineering point of view. Sustainable Hawaii, which is solar, um, solar energy, waste, water, waste and water management, and then an IT solutions for health, virtual reality, and cybersecurity. That's all they're doing. So they're doing something in those six areas. They're going to be a college that focuses um, capabilities in those six areas. And of course, they want to be dedicated to having nationally recognized curriculums in those six areas and attracting students nationally and internationally. So that's their strategic driver. And from that, they develop four strategic objectives. I'm only showing you two of them. Um, you know, developing nationally recognized programs in their vision, the, th the three things that I talked about. And then the objective, too, was to become ranked within the top 100 engineering schools in those six areas and how they were going to do.